Hello, my name is Ronald Furman, and I'd like to offer this devotional on behalf of Agape Christian Worship Center. Uh, since my last and only other devotional, I became ill. I couldn't seem to get over a cough I had. I kept saying, I'm okay, nothing's wrong, I'm going to get over it, I'm good, you know, I got this. But my wife encouraged me, actually insisted that I call the doctor. After talking to the doctor, he said I should go to the emergency room. I grumbled a little bit because I had to drive 80 miles round trip to Upland. I figured I'd be there for a few hours. They'd give me some meds and send me home. Uh, but this time it was a little different. Uh, before I could even enter the emergency room, they had a tent set up and I had to check my vitals before I can go in. And once I got in, there were only a few people there. Um, what usually takes a few hours uh, only took 20 minutes. And they had taken x-rays, blood tests, everything. And before I knew it, I was on uh, a bed in the emergency room. So uh, my chest x-rays revealed that I had pneumonia. I also had the flu. Um, so they admitted me. They also checked me for the COVID virus, um, but it came back negative. They had to check twice to com for confirmation. It came back negative twice. But the doctors, even though they did an excellent job, attended to me well and everything, um, it, it was like they really didn't have a lot of time for me. They were too busy taking care of the very, very, very sick people there. And my attempt at levity was acknowledged, but it didn't go over well. Uh, they were just too busy, too many patients. And um, the, the jokes were to comfort me anyway, because um, I was a little nervous, uh, got a little nervous when I saw all the activity and um, felt a little lowly. Sometimes we as Christians can feel like we're on top of things, that, that we're, we're blessed and highly favored, can't nothing touch this, uh, uh, you, nothing can bother us. Like, like uh, you know, it's great being a child of God and you the man and everything, everything's going to be all right because the Lord God has our back. And so we walked around, some, we walk around sometimes a little, a little bit puffed up sometimes. Um, but the Lord God, he uh, has his ways of uh, bringing us back to earth, of bringing us back to reality, of deflating our ego, deflating that, um, that self-esteem we develop, letting us know that he's the all almighty. He's the man. He's the one and almighty. And we're, we're only a, a work in progress. Philippians 1, 6 in the Amplified Version reads, And I am convinced and sure of, every, of this very thing, that he who has began a good work in you will continue it until the day of Jesus Christ, right to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. So we are all still have a long way to go. We still have more and more to learn from the Word of God. It, 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 it's amazing to me how you can, you know, continually uh, read and learn from the, from the Word of God. I mean, the Word of God is so awesome that you can, you can spend the rest of your life reading and studying it. Proverbs 16, 18, and 19 reads, Pride comes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before fall. Better it is to be of a, human, of a humble spirit with the meek and poor than to divide spoil with the proud. Uh, I talked about thoroughly examining ourselves last time. I suppose we need 
to do that ever so often. Matthew 18.4 teaches us that whoever will humble himself therefore and become like this little child, trusting, lowly, loving, forgiving, is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Isn't that awesome? As humble as we are, as humble as we can feel and be in this earth realm, that that same humbleness will be considered by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ greatness in his house, in the kingdom of God. Wow. Maybe we should um, wait until then and let uh, Jesus tell us who's, how great we are. Maybe we should follow, we should follow the example of Jesus. He taught us not only to be humble, but to be obedient. Philippians 2.8 reads, And after he had appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself still further and carried his obedience to the extreme of death, even the death of the cross. Amen. Pastor Allison is teaching a two-part sermon called Hunger Games. I can't wait to hear part two. Uh, nowadays, I have to wait for a quiet time to listen to the awesome devotionals and sermons that's coming from this ministry and spend time with the Lord. The good thing about listening to Pastor now is if you miss something, you could rewind it. Um, he spoke about liberation leading to celebration, to affirmation. But there's a gap between celebration and affirmation. Maybe that's where some of us are still. But I would encourage us to stay strong in the Lord, keep our heads up, and know who's almighty. Now I'd like to... Uh, offer this prayer. Heavenly Father, we humble ourselves before you, knowing that you are almighty God, maker of heaven and earth. You are so awesome, Father God, and the more we study your word, the more we grow in humility. Yet still, at the same time, Father God, we represent you as your ambassadors here on earth. You, Father God, spoke things into existence. That's why your word cannot return void, because it's alive. It's, it's, and once spoken by you, Lord God, or by us, it starts building and creating and reconciling and forgiving. The word starts redeeming and loving, Lord God. So thank you, Father God, for all you've done in our lives and all you're about to do. We ask that you place your hedge of protection around and about us, keeping us safe from the wiles of the enemy, and cause us to always remember, Father God, that the enemy is crouching at the door, waiting for every and any opportunity to jump up and try to defile us any way and any place he can. But we're going to stand strong, Father God. We're going to stand strong in the boots of peace, that peace that surpasses all understanding. We're, as we're girded around our waist, Father God, in truth. Father God, thank you for covering us with the blood of Christ Jesus so that we are seen righteous and made righteous, Father God, in your sight. And with that shield, we can quench the fiery dots of the enemy. Thank you, Father God, for your word that is sharper than two any two-edged sword, and for your helmet of salvation. Father God, thank you through and in the name and by the blood of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. And thank you.